So, uh, we could start to speak about de demystifying data lake uh, layers. Uh, well, start point is to speak about a bit about what is data lake in general, right? So uh, the most common definition is that we speak about scalable data management platform to uh, manage data, or in other words, store, process, and discovery data and data assets. By data assets, I mean exactly something more similar to product, right? Which we are uh, showing someone to sell something or just there are some consumers of this product. Uh, so I've been in Iceland, so it's a great place. If you have never been, uh, you should go there and we continue. Now let's speak about uh, layers. Like why do we need layers in our data lake? There are a few quite common cases. So uh, first of all, there could be different roles and functions and we want to decouple, split it. Another one is access segregation. So someone should or must have access to, uh, to, late, to latest layers which we have and maybe we don't want to provide anyone access to first layers which we would have, right? Another thing is a uh, different data lifecycle. So different retentions, versions, etc. Team segregation. Surprisingly, there could be that if we have uh, on, on our first layer ingestion process, uh, there could be one stack of technologies. It absolutely doesn't mean that somewhere else we would have another one. And as far as our data lake will be bigger and bigger, there could be separate teams which has specific function and work on specific layer only. And last one is change boundaries. So it came from any um, architectural approach, we try to find uh, things which are more changeable, right? And in such a way to define context of our application and decouple it on subsystems. Uh, going further, going further, yep, right. Uh, so the, the first one in common approach and these two layers are existing in any uh, uh, data lake architecture is row and master. We inherit it from data warehouse approaches, an idea is so row, it's also called staging, it's also sometimes called landing and bronze. So it's a layer where we uh, pull or push uh, data in the most raw format. In such a way, we could guarantee, guarantee really fast source onboarding. So we don't need to think about how this data will be used, but we could easily or create a number of simple patterns to consume it. Another one is exactly business oriented. So master, curated, conformed, cleansed, gold. There are, <laughs> spend some time to find like the most common definitions are actually people are putting names always on something. Uh, so in this layer, uh, we actually provide value for business to consume data. So it's cleaned, it's normalized. Uh, it could be already joined, right? So it's validated, it's past data quality, like final layer, which basically gives value to all business around. Uh, so this model started and mostly it works quite well even now when you have a really small number of consumers of data, like one big consumer with a number of use cases. So it still can work. Uh, but uh, if we speak about uh, what wide use cases or where we have much more clients, so there are problems with this approach. So uh, right now, the most common one is three layer. An idea which is uh, that we have intermediate layer. And if in case of a row and master, we have one to many, right? So here we have silver layer where we, uh, as intermediate step, we try to normalize our data to maybe make data quality checks. So it's also questionable where exactly it should be happen. But basically we have some raw data and we normalize it to some object. Let's call it object, right? So in our case, it's normalized table. It has structure format. Uh, it has some already metadata inside or could not have it, it depends, right? And then we have gold layer. So in such a way, for example, if we have multiple clients and they have would like to have, for example, different partitioning, right? So it's common problem of uh, of this schema. So if you have number of clients and they need one partition in schema A and another has partition in schema B, right? So mostly what you do is there was politic fighting and there was technical fighting to put all partitions in one place to just give some compromise, but like it doesn't make a lot of sense. So here you could have uh, 
uh, you could build different models for different clients, but you don't need to start from row area. You already have this intermediate step, which simplify your implementation of your final models. So a uh, silver layer mostly means structured data. If your data is not structured, it means that as part of going from row to the silver layer, you need to apply structure or create structure based on this data or just put some metadata on it. So if we speak about video files, for example. Uh, as I said, so mapping mostly one-to-one -one from row to silver. Uh, also maybe a bit about partitioning. So in case of row ingest, we try to simplify partition schema as much as we can. Quite often it goes by a scheduled day, by some ingest date uh, or something. Uh, in specific cases, it could be some COP date. So we extract row data and we also have some connection to some metadata data set or some meta mark, right? Which we can put on this row data. In case of silver, so uh, partitioning could be already more business oriented. And of course in gold, so it goes for specific exact query case, etc. Let's go further. Uh, yeah, so uh, just for example, how it can look in real world. So uh, here is one of AWS uh, official reference architecture. So we have some ingestion layer, which is part of this uh, creation of raw data, right? So there could be different technologies which we will use for it. Then we, uh, for example, validate and clean data and create a cleaned area. So they call it here clean. So it's already in party format, column oriented one. It already has quite a strict partition. Uh, next one is curated layers. So here they are using combinations of glue jobs to make all these transformations and step functions to execute it. And curated, they already have some final format which can be consumed by Athena, by Redshift, by SageMaker, whatever. Uh, important part here is also that uh, we use catalog and access control to provide access to this data, which means that as far as you have structure, so you could connect it to data catalogs, so there are meta information about the stateful, and for consumers of this data, they don't need to know about real format and how this data uh, physically stored on S3 or any other object store, etc. So. Uh, from one side, they have much simple uh, understanding of this metadata table in tabular information about data. From another, you could also add access control in our cases, like formation, where we could provide a row column uh, filtering to restrict access to specific data sets. So in such a way, for example, you could control PI data uh, or any other like filters which you would like. Because catalog itself, uh, I think, has only table level, and based to lake formation, you could have a much more strict one. Going further, so five layers. So technically, a five layer architecture exists even before, just mostly application and sandbox. We are just not saying that it's data lake. We are putting it on consumers. We are saying, like, if you if you're a consumer, you should have your space somewhere on HDFS, for example, right, with your Spark jobs, etc. So. Right now, as part of platform, uh, it makes sense to help these guys mostly create separate layer where uh, they could run their stuff, they could store their stuff, so they could upload some CSV file and make join of it, for example, with some curated data. But the difference is that we, as Data Lake platform, does not guarantee any uh, governance on top of their data, right? So it's space where they could do stuff. And mostly it's provided as one box for everything, right? So in this case, if people come and they have no knowledge, we could provide them data engineers, which will provide them patterns, how they could use it in such a way. Uh, the same goes for sandbox. So in case of sandbox, we could provide uh, quite early access to raw data, structured data, before it will go to curated one. Quite a popular case for data science teams, because sometimes they are working with really raw data, or for example, they need to get this data much faster than it will be provided by curated layer. Uh, so the same, so uh, if, if your data science team has absolutely their own VPC with their stuff and toys, right? So it could be absolutely obsolete to have it as part of your platform. But if it's so, so in this case, it's just like space for them, governance for them, so you provide it as service. Right, uh, let's go further. Right, 
a quite important thing is that these layers are logical, not physical. They can be physical, but it's not a point. That's why I put a few uh, like ideas around it. And in some cases it could work, in some cases not, but like I think in general it should make some, uh, some common sense. So there is no need to move data in next layer if you are not making any transformation on it. If you are getting, uh, I will put examples later. So if you don't change uh, object store requirements for it, like retention versioning or anything else, like metadata information. So there is no need to move your data set. If you are not making any site transformation like data quality validation checks, et cetera, which will say that this data makes sense or not. So there is no sense to move it. And what, so what outcomes of it? So if you have structured data in your row layer and there is no validation for it, right? So for example, we are consuming CDC to S3, there is zero validations which you could do easily. And they are quite specific for database. So let's assume that in most cases, you don't have anything. Do you need to just replicate this data to some structured S3 folder so it will be in structured layer? I think no, like by default, like by, by definition. So you could mix up different S3 layers, S3 physical layers between logical ones. So there are constant pros, right? So one, for one side, we don't duplicate data just for fun. And I started all this presentation actually from one story. So I came to make assessment of data lake solution. Like it was actually called lake house, but it was data lake. And they have five layers, which uh, you've seen before, right? Yeah, five layers. So they had five layers and they just replicate CDC data through five layers because they could, the idea is that there are some layers. They, they, they thought that there is a strict connection between S3, for example, and this layer, right? So if you want to move it, even if you don't do anything, this stuff, so still you need to replicate it. So they had five replications. So uh, they had a bit more layers, actually some internal ones, but it doesn't matter. So two terabytes become 10 terabytes just because, uh, because they are just mapped as is, right? So. There is no need in such thing. Uh, there, are, there are cons of such solution, right? So we don't duplicate our data just for fun. Uh, so uh, common cons could be is if you use some regex rules, right? So you want to simplify it on levels that I, if I have row data on, in row area, right? So there's row 80 groups which connected it, row roles and such management on some on a regex level or something. Uh, could be really simple, right? But what I see from pre practice is that uh, mostly for each source, you have separate group for each source, a read, write, et cetera, or role. Uh, and the same goes for each like data set, each pipeline, et cetera. So uh, in general, so uh, you could manage this thing without data duplication. And it will provide much more value in the sense that you are not moving something because you have like layer to, to do it in something else. So your functionality could be sp split on different part of system. Uh, the same goes for data warehouse. So data warehouse could be part of your data platform. It could be part of some layer, right? So uh, like uh, there, is, there is no restrictions that data warehouse should become consumer of your data as separate one. It, it can be, but it shouldn't be by default. Uh, and I, I guess the most important part of this talk, like exactly this idea that like, let's start thinking about what we are doing and why we are doing it. Not just uh, put everything as a strict requirements. But of course there could be cases where maybe uh, we would need to do this thing. As I said, so mostly if there are different uh, retention policies for our raw data and the same goes for any other layer. So yeah, you would need to move your data through it. Surprisingly, it's that soul. So uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Yeah, I have one question. Sure. So you said that it's not required to, it even doesn't matter uh, to require to copy your data through uh, layers. But uh, it's 
pretty obvious for me. And you, I have another question it's related to big data environments and you have separate environments of your project, uh, mm -hmm. some kind of data, dev environment, test environment and production yeah. environment. And, and from my experience, uh, most of projects run in their environments and they have duplicated uh, big data sets and it's, it's around uh, terabytes or even maybe more than that and they copy their data lakes and their data warehouses maybe you have any ideas and suggestions about how to manage that properly uh, there in that way we can speak about it so a uh, quite broad topic actually so uh commonly how it should be done so when we speak about data lake we speak about uh, not just as one piece of work but data strategy to whole company and whole company should change for it. What I mean by, well, the simplest one, your sources should be able to provide you not only production data, but also UET data, right? Or even tests or some dev data, etc. And mostly when it's possible, so in this case, your dev should be connected to their dev, UET with UET, production with production. So in such way, everyone works with their own data, there is, everything is split and everything is marvelous. In practice, however, uh, it faced quite often that uh, there is no UET at all, right? So in this case, production data, especially if it's not uh, confident, uh, sorry, not there is no some uh, strict access PI data, etc. So it can be replicated to your one environment. Uh, there could be cases where you just extract one test file, right? So build your pipeline on test file. For you, your UET, mostly it's possible that you are rep replicate whole stream just to be sure that you are capable to uh, to to find any issues with performance with peaks because you could make performance tests etc. But like you need quite a lot of statistics and also to not like uh, uh, a lot of statistics to understand and what is shape of your data, how often it comes, what is size of it, if there are any variety in in this throughput and similar cases. So I would say duplication of data is not bad as just as is, right? So storage is cheap, right? Uh, yeah, but it should be like some edge case, right? So if, if there is no other options, right, we need to do it. If it's okay for business, okay. Uh, in such way, uh, is it answer your question? Yes, yes, it answers. Yeah, the only thing is I would like to mention that in our project, we are used to having uh, that way where we have all the other projects refer read only production data of another project. That's why we have some delays uh, of uh, feature development to another project. And when we can start our initiative on, on top of that productionized data. So that that's one problem we faced, I would say. Okay. So yeah, so as I said, so uh, quite quite problematic topic is just because it quite depends from cases which we have and environment in which we are working. That's why it's quite badly documented actually. So I've tried to make some research. You could find like I think maximum 10, 10 articles about it and it's twice mentioned in two books. So as far as uh, there is quite big pro so there is quite simple abstractions which we have and there is real life right so and it's absolutely different so all these layers will be moved there could be physical there could be more logical there could be this replication which is quite dummy one but it could be if there is no other options etc and it's resolved some use case but like idea is that it shouldn't be by default right so there is no strict requirements in it and it's like main idea of my talk and it's quite short one, yeah. So you have, <laughs> I could save a lot of your time. So uh, any other questions? I have one question that is related more to consumer side because sure. that's like I'm representing this consumer side part. Uh, so let's imagine we have like microservices architecture and I'm not sure if uh, this is applicable to, to microservices, but still. So what if we have several services that uh, wanna read this data from this uh, data lake, right? How should we organize that? And maybe that's not applicable, I, I don't know, because you know, best practice is that every microservice has its own database, right? And in this case, we will have one big shared database. So how should we deal with this situation? 
Uh, so I, I would say in this case, you are not building microservice architecture, right? Because you are breaking one of main concepts of it if you don't want to store it as part of your microservice, have its own uh, database storage, right? So I, I would say, so first of all, it makes sense to stop calling it microservice in this case. So you have service architecture, which consumes, uh, which consumes data from data lake, right? Use it in some way, uh, mostly read from it, right? So, so I, I think it's main thing is stop, uh, like mix up this concept. So it's already will make you much wider to look how it should be done. So if if you want to, if there are use cases for microservices, because in this case, like if each service has its own storage, so it's mostly all OTP, right? So so you read, right? There you are make quite fast updates, etc. Quite quite a lot of communication, and it's quite fast in most cases. Uh, data lakes mostly present uh, all apps, right? So. It's quite slow, uh, so uh, mostly speed layers are not always exist in data lakes, and it also has quite a lot of cost. So it it's quite depends. I I would say that if you consider to have a separate uh, there is separate use case from data lake, so it makes sense to consume this data and have its your own storage for OLTP operations, just any other consumer. And what if we have a layer with, for example, Elasticsearch, it will be our gold, gold layer. So now we have a fast storage, everyone can consume it. So is that a good case for consuming your data from Data Lake? As I said, so consuming data from Data Lake is why we have Data Lake. So it's not a problem at all. Uh, problematic is if you would like to start writing there, right? So if you are just reading, I think it's absolutely fine to have such, such shared layer and just read it. But if you need writing, right? So in this case, you are switching to absolutely another, uh, let's say it, application, which works with data like date. So it consumes data, but if it needs to make any modification, quite likely that it would need to have its own space for it and own storage for it. I see, thank you. At least how I got your use case. So if you still have questions, we could catch up later. Uh, one question from my side, Dimitro, if I uh, can. Uh, could you elaborate more about uh, governments and uh, access uh, management to all, all those layers? How, what, are, what are the best practice and yeah, your experience? All right, so uh, data governance, uh, let's speak about it. Uh, quite depends from company and use cases. So because some, some companies are having data lake as some more internal pet project, right? So they're working with some data for one department and there is almost no any restrictions for this data, at least on level of this. That's why like governance could be absolutely skipped at all. There are cases, right? But mostly when we need to guarantee governance. So, uh, one of like things which we speak about just abstraction, right? So, so uh, mostly we don't provide access to raw data. So based on uh, structured and curated data, there is some uh, access control, which is based on AD groups, which is based on uh, some service, which is provided by your platform. Quite likely, mostly we are working with some pl platforms nowadays, so in this case, like formation for AWS, uh, I'm pretty sure there should be something for GCP and Azure. Quite likely there is some Azure AD group specific thing. Uh, for GCP, I have no idea, but I assume there should be something. So uh, main main ru rule of thumb is to provide as least, uh, as least access as it should be, right? To, to anyone to process this data. Mostly, uh, Maybe I will make another talk about source onboarding. So as part of source onboarding uh, procedure, so when we uh, consume data from source, right? So uh, we try to build some kind of relationship with source owner and try to understand what is data, uh, not from business side, but exactly from restrictions. So if there are some control, which if there is some access control, which should be provided by source owner, is there any uh, restrictions, for example, like some Canada department cannot work with, uh, I don't know, USA department data, right? So all these things are written in some confluence pages, they are discussed, etc. And based on it, we have built some rules which should be provided on specific layer 
So um, it's one site and mostly how it's worked, right? So we collect all these requirements and just build it on using services which we can get. From one side, um, another topic is PI data. So also quite important. So restrict data. Mostly uh, there are like, so it's quite off topic, but <laughs> there are like mostly three use cases how you could do it with it uh, for actually for. So one of it is just draw PI data. It's great use case. You're really, <laughs> really happy if you could not consume PI data and no one's needed. Not always case, but if it's possible, it will be great. Uh, another one is to obfuscate data. So you are just mask it. There are different masking rules, how you do it. So in some cases, you are just remove everything and just put some stars or whatever. In some cases, you need to leave some letter or some last number or something. So just like semi-masking, let's call it such a way. Encryption is great approach to work with this data as uh, the most problematic part is how to consume this data and decrypt it. So for most of applications it could be quite uh, hard in sense that it require custom implementation. But of course it's the best one. one. Uh, yeah, and another one is just level control, right? So if something goes through our data, we are saying that there is PI data. But we are, have some services which uh, control what we have as access here and there for each columns, rows, etc., cells. Yeah, but it requires much more management, much more validation. But it's absolutely a valid option to not du duplicate your data, for example, uh, to have masking and not masking in the same way. So something like that. Uh, quite a lot of things. So I'm not sure that I answer your specific question. <laughs> or haven't created many one new. Uh, yeah, of course, it's very general and wide question, but I, I, I think you, you touched the point I was interested in. Thank you. Sure, yeah, so as I said, so uh, everything in our world, it depends, right? So uh, we have quite small abstractions and quite a lot of different implementations, how to do it for each specific use case. Problem is that we, I think eventually we would need to to have something in between so some reference templates for at least some generic cases which we are using right now and i think it we will try to cover it in some new talks which some specific use cases uh, i have one more question Maybe sure to touch this point uh, as well just about maybe i lost this part but uh, uh, the idea is uh, uh, to transform your data lake to maybe partially or fully to delta lake and maybe from that point uh, to transform your data lake architecture to lake house architecture what's your insights there sure uh let's speak about it <laughs> why not well uh in general so problem which uh which uh which is solved by lake house it was uh <laughs> It's not something which appeared a year ago, right? So the same problems we faced and it's even come up from uh, original times where there was only data warehouses. So in that time, so when you consume some data, you were calculating deltas uh, in some way, like joining full snapshots with full snapshots, try to get these deltas uh, and it was working, right? So idea of lake house was to move this part of work from lake, from a uh, data warehouse to data lake. And from other side, simplify it using like uh, Delta Lake, using Hoodie, using uh, Iceberg format, right? So idea is that we have much more metadata that we don't need to make uh, full join on full join data. We could have some partial changes and simplify it. So uh, it doesn't change anything in picture from layers point of view. So uh, if uh, so, for example, it could live in a silver layer, it could be lived uh, inside a curated layer, depends from use cases. The same, so it's quite depends, uh, but it doesn't change layer because layers are abstract, so that's why I could put it <laughs> as I like. Uh, is it answer your question? Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah. So idea is great because we are moving everything more to data lake, make the access to it uh, much more simpler and cheaper comparing to have it in data warehouse and try to provide access to everyone from data warehouse. Right, uh, any other questions? 
And thank you for so many questions. I really enjoyed it. I, I was sure that after I will ask for questions, there will be a pause and I will say thank you. And there will be, and it will be the shortest presentation ever. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I guess we are over. Um, right, so uh, in, in this case, so thank you. I think it gave some idea about layers that it's quite abstract things and mostly based on use cases, you are come up to ideas how you want to do it and work with your data. Uh, if you will have 